So hello everybody in the Olympic Village. Uh, great to, to be with you again. This is my wife, Jacqueline, a former Olympian diver and fourth at the World Championships and a chaplain herself. Yes, and my handsome husband, he was a former professional snowboarder and he's a chaplain since 20 years. And we just love being with you and connected to you, to the village and all around the world. And today it's a special honor. We have so many great guests. Wow, I'm looking forward so much. Actually, our guest speaker, Jacqueline, will introduce him a little later. He will have really a message full of hope, full of courage. And it, I'm sure you will be so much uh, yeah, empowered through that. And But first, we go into the worship. We just uh, have also the great possibility to have live worship from Vienna. So Vienna calling. Marion and Gabriel will lead us into a wonderful worship song called It Is Well, and you will find the lyrics in the chat. But before we go, I start to pray and then uh, let's have an amazing time together. So Holy Spirit, we invite you. Holy Spirit, come into every room in the Olympic Village. Holy Spirit, come to every athlete, to every team, even in the night, Lord, that you are with them. And I thank you that we will have such an impartation of courage and of strength. Lord, we thank you for your word that it is alive. Lord, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And to you belongs all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So as your mics are all muted, you can sing with us and yeah, sing for the Lord at your home, just in private and nobody will hear it except the Lord. So feel free. You find the lyrics in the chat, I think Jörg already said that. Yes, it is well.
Thank you so much. Live from Vienna, Marian and Gabriel. What yeah. beautiful voices. Thank you so much. Amazing. And actually now we just have our, uh, yeah, our guest speaker, Jacqueline, uh, will introduce him. But I can only say, you know, there are some people, they bring joy wherever they go. And he is some of those. But there are also people, they bring joy whenever they go. So he is definitely <laughs> one of the first. And uh, yeah, so please, Jacqueline, introduce yeah, him. I have a special privilege to introduce Jan Kohler. And we know him since maybe 15 years. Our children, they were babies by the time. And he was serving the pastors in from Hillsong, Germany, Austria, and Vienna in Konstanz, which is close from us. So that's why we love Jan. And yeah know him so well and Jan he's he's leading the Hillsong Church in Munich now together with his wife Janina since five years and they have a one-year-old son now yeah amazing family I we even know their parents and yeah it's a special honor to have them with us and Jan he knows really the sports world very well he has a passion for that too and he's serving soccer players from um football soccer soccer, how do you say, soccer team, Bayern München, Munich, <laughs> I hope it is right now, and as well in Madrid now, and many other athletes, and his message is so inspiring and great, and I love it so much, especially today, because even tonight, um, diving is starting, not diving, but my competition, um, I was a diver on the three meter springboard, and exactly Tonight they have their competition, so I think his message will fit very, very well. And yeah, so we are just enjoying having you with us. Thank you so much for your time and doing this. Uh, so let's give a warm applause to Jan Koller. Hey, thanks so much. Hey, it's such a privilege to be here. Thanks, Jörg and Jacqueline. It's amazing what you guys are doing and very inspired by your passion for people and the passion to help people like flourish and grow. And hey, everyone else who's uh, joining right now or who watches this later um, um, on YouTube or wherever. So hey, um, it's such a, a privilege to speak to you guys. And I pray that you get encouraged by God's word. I think it's so powerful because, because God promises like his word will never come back like empty. It will always do something inside of us. That's the special thing about what we're doing right now. Um, and I got really inspired the other day when I read the story of David and Goliath. 
and uh, maybe you heard about it, maybe you read it yourself a few times, but I read it again, it didn't spoke in a new way to me um, and encouraged me so much for the challenges ahead. And I hope that it encourages you this time to really step forward because God has his hand on your life and he wants to do something great in your life and through your life. So I'm really inspired. And when we go through that text, like you will find so many things that um, God wants to speak to us in that story. And, um, and I'm just to make sure everyone is on the same page, like the story takes us into a situation where like the, the, the people of Israel, God's people, um, were stand against the Philistines and basically a valley was between them and what happened is like that Goliath one of their like strongest and biggest um, warriors always challenged the people of Israel for a fight and so the people of Israel stood there over days because they don't didn't really know whom to send into this battle and they were really afraid by the strength and the uh, the size of Goliath and they knew like this fight can determine all their future and it can determine the rest of their lives and maybe you feel like you're part of a, a battle like that you know like you feel like hey there's something really challenging in front of me and it can determine what's happened what's happening after um, and the thing is like the the whole scenario um, is full of little things and little encouragement that God wants to give us when we're in our battles, when we are facing our Goliath. And uh, I hope you understand my English. It's not that good, but it's better than your German probably. So um, I will keep speaking uh, English. So, hey, let's just enter the text and see what God wants to say through that. In First Samuel verse, um, chapter 17, it says in verse 22, David left his things with the keeper of supplies, so his dad told him to visit his brothers, and his brothers were in that group of people in that army of the Israelites, standing there afraid of Goliath. And his dad told, uh, told David, hey, just leave all the animals and go to your brothers and see how they are. So he didn't tell him, like, go and fight a battle. He told him, just look after your brothers, and this is what he's doing. He's left all the things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. So the whole atmosphere was an atmosphere full of fear. And there was a fear culture that David entered in. Uh, people were afraid, they heard, they saw Goliath, they heard him speaking, and they were just so afraid to do something, and basically they were frozen by fear. And I think like we have to be aware that fear always wants to keep us passive. Fear always wants to um, tell us to shrink back or to, to stop believing for something great in our life. I think the enemy the devil would love us to be afraid. Um, if, we, if we are afraid and if we, we are frozen by fear, then we are not living in the full potential that God has for us. And I think like we have to understand that that is a weapon that the enemy wants to use to keep, uh, keep us back, keep our dreams low, keep our expectations low. And, and David entered that atmosphere. But David was really different than all the people in that group, uh, in, the, in the army, because listen to how he response to that a little bit later when he looked at everything when he heard all the what was said and he heard like the king telling the whole armies like hey that person who will fight against Goliath like there will be big rewards like you will have a tax-free life how good is that especially if you live in Germany uh, tax-free life you will have the daughter of the king like the the king told all of them like hey this will be the reward but still fear was dominant in that in that atmosphere but David was different. The text says, David asked the man standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes the disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? So like there's something that we should take from David and his attitude. David was looking towards the reward. David wasn't looking at the challenge like David was asking and wanted to know like what will be the reward. Everyone else was focused on what's happening if I fail. What's happened? What are the consequences if I lose this battle? David had a different spirit. 
he came and was like, hey, what would be the reward if someone would win? What would be the reward if I take this battle? Like, what is the good that could happen out of that? And I think in so many scenarios, our default thinking is, oh, what happens if I don't win? Or what happens if I, if I fail? But David had a different spirit. He thought like, hey, let's just imagine I win. Let's just imagine I can do this. Let's just imagine I could win this battle. What would be the reward? And I think like if we keep our eyes on the prize, and this is what Paul says, he's like, hey, I'm focusing on the prize, which is Jesus and, uh, and his eternity. Like I'm not focusing on all my, my circumstances and my challenges. I'm focusing on the prize. And even now in your maybe in your in your challenge ahead of you like in your in your in your sphere of where you're like trying to compete like hey keep your eyes on the prize keep your eyes on like hey okay what would happen if i win what would happen if i actually um win that fight win my challenge win my championship whatever it is i think like this is such an important spirit in a culture of fear in a culture of failure to keep our eyes on the prize and Because God is a God that wants to see you succeed. And God is a God where nothing is impossible. And if you adapt that spirit and don't think it's like, hey, what are all the odds against me? Like, okay, what could happen? And what happens if I win? And then it says like his brothers, they weren't really pumped about his reaction. Like his own brothers, the people closest to him, you might think like, hey, they cheer him on. They are like, awesome, David, you are courageous. But listen what his brothers say. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the man, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Hey, there's every reason why David could have just gone home now. Like his own, his own brothers tell him like, hey, who are you? Like, why do you think you can do this? Like, hey, your motives aren't pure motives. Like you're just here to see a, a spectacle. You're just here for yourself. And the closest voices in his life at that moment didn't encourage him. And I think like that tells us a story about like that we really be, have to be careful of which voices we listen to. Um, because like David heard that, but he turned around and asked someone else like, hey, tell me again, what is the price if I win? And, um, and he knew like at that point, he loved his brothers. That's why he came to ask them how they are to support them. But at that moment, he understood like, I can't take their words on now. I can't live my life according to their words, even if they are family, even if they um, are so close to me. So I'm asking you right now, like, what are the voices that are maybe in your own head? What are the voices from people that you thought like maybe are full on for you? But what are the voices that currently you have to turn down a little bit and focus on the right, vo right voice of God that's speaking to you? You can do this and I'm with you. Um, I have these headphones um, and you can push that button of noise canceling um, and you only hear um, what you want to hear right now, the music that you want to hear. And it turns down all the noise. And sometimes in your life, you have to push this noise canceling button and, and turn down all the noise of like um, people doubting you or people thinking like, hey, who are you that you're trying to compete, that you're trying to win? Like you don't have the history of that. You don't have the the you know the the career to dream about that like sometimes you just have to push that noise canceling button in your life and say okay like i will focus on one one voice right now and this is the voice of god encouraging me and knowing that nothing is impossible with his strength on my life and david had to do this and there's one of my absolute famous quotes that inspires me all the time um is the man in the arena um it's it's a text from Theodore Roosevelt that he um, wrote down um, in 1910 and it says the following the man in the arena it's not the critic who counts not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done ben better the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly 
who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to be, strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I think that is so inspiring, you know, like it's not the, the critic that counts. It's not, uh, it's not the people that are sitting on the side um, judging you on the arena, like you live your life right now in the arena. And it's important that you're not living your life for your critics and, and for the people who are doubting you. It's important that you are like focus on the voice of God right now. It's like, hey, nothing is, imp is impossible. And then the text keeps going um, because like the king now, Saul, is aware of David and of his conversations that he's having. And David comes to Saul the king. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of these Philistines. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are the only young man and you are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said, Carried on, David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I sized it by its hair, stuck it, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This un uncircumcised Philistine will be like, no, will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the power of the lion and the power of the bear will rescue me from this hand of the Philistine. So Saul's telling David, like, hey, you can't do this. There's another voice. It's like, hey, you can't do this. Like, hey, this guy in front of you, like his history is war. His history is like he's trained in that. And you're just that young guy coming from um, looking after sheep and lions. And David told him, it's like, hey, like, you're right. I've never been here. You, you're absolutely true. I didn't do this for the rest of my life. But right now I'm in this place and I feel like this is a God opportunity. And, and maybe you feel the same, you know, like you, hey, I've never been in that position. I've never had this opportunity. Um, I've never been in a place like that. But it's, it doesn't mean like that God didn't prepare you for that moment. Like maybe the other victories that you have look smaller compared to where you are right now. But God prepared you for this way. And you can tell your story about the lions and the sheep um, that you won over. And I think like that's important for you to know right now. Maybe you've never been at a place like today. But that doesn't mean that God didn't prepare you for today. Like everything that you did in your history, like all these, those little fights that you had to fight, all those little wins that you had, all were pre preparation for the moment you are in right now. And God on purpose put them into your life so that you're ready for what's ahead of you now. And then Saul, Saul said, okay, like, hey, I can't convince this guy not to do it. Like, okay, we will send you into this war. And then something interesting happens. Then Saul dressed David in his own armor. So Saul says like, hey, here's my armor. Here's my whole equipment. If you fight for us, you can have all of my armor to fight for it. He put a coat of armor on him and the bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. And then is what David says then. I cannot go in these. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So what David, uh, what Saul says, like, hey, you're fighting. Okay, do it my way. Okay, like I have the equipment for you. Um, you have all of my stuff for it. So now you go and do it. But David says like, no, I can't do it like that. I can't copy you. I have to be myself. And I have to trust that who I am and what I bring to the table right now is enough. 
So I'm not trying to be someone else right now. I will be myself and I will bring my best. And I'm believing that God puts his hand on me, on my identity. And I'm not trying to copy your style of, of winning. I'm not trying to copy your style of fighting. Like I am myself and God called me. And in this time of like social media and everything, it's so easy to compare yourself, you know, to see what others are doing, how others are preparing, how others are fighting, um, how others are winning. And maybe, maybe you compare yourself and you feel like, wow, I'm so overwhelmed and I feel like small in compared to other people. But God is wanting to speak to you. It's like, don't try to put an armor on from someone else. Don't try to lift the life that someone else is living. Like I called you for a time like this and I want you to be you. And, and be confident that all that you have, your gifts, like your personality, uh, your talents, that they are given by me so that you can win your battle. And I think that is so important in a time like this, that we run our race. And sometimes you have those, if you see how horses are competing, like they have these blinders next to their eyes so that they focus on their lane. And I think like in our lives, sometimes we have to do exactly the same. We have to run our race. We have to stay in our lane. Um, and some people might look like um, they are overtaking you. But as long as you stay your course and as long as you stay who you are, you will see God putting his anointing on you and see what God can do through that. And then the last verse that I wanted to share, and then we can talk a little bit about it, um, is the following. As Saul said to David, And no, no, Saul is fighting now. Um, David is going to the battle. David is approaching the battle now with Goliath. And he's basically, after he said like, no, I can't take the armor. He's actually picking up stones, picking up um, some wood. And he's trying to run through Go to Goliath to fight this fight. And Goliath sees David running towards him. The Bible says that he, David, Lee was, David was a small guy. And Goliath says to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give um, you the, 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 the sarcasses of Philistines army to the birds, to the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those who gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. So this is the strategy of David. He's running to Goliath and Goliath is there with his whole armor, his huge sword. But David is telling him like, I'm not coming into, of, uh, I'm not coming in my strength right now. I'm coming in the strength of my God. And I'm not, my strategy is not like I'm good enough. My strategy is not, I have enough. My strategy is like, I have a supernatural God on my side who has his hand on my life and he will win this battle for me. I think it's so, so special that God spoke to Moses before Moses was splitting the sea and all of Egypt trying to um, hunt them and get them. God tells him, it's like, hey, be still and let me fight this battle. And I think like there's a moment maybe straight in front of you and uh, maybe uh, in the moments before you have your big challenge, your big um, championship, your big competition, where you can be still and knowing like, okay, I did all the preparation, um, but my trust right now is not in myself, it's not in my skills. Now in this moment, in this few minutes before I'm going to compete, like my whole confidence is in God and I'm trusting on him in this place and I'm trusting that he is enough and then he will use this to bring glory to him. And, and I think that is so powerful to rely on God's strength. And I really want to speak courage in you to run to your enemy, like run into in, your challenge, to your competition, full of confidence, not afraid, but knowing that you're not running in your own strength. You're running in the strength of God. And the same Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. You have the same power available to you that Jesus had to rose from the dead. 
So I'm really convinced that God wants to do something really amazing through your life. And that if you put your focus on him, you will see like courage starting to rise more and more and taking over in your heart. And I'm praying for you and praying for the next battle ahead of you that you will just experience something miraculous and that you will see God at work and see how God's mighty power like strengthening you and do something amazing with your life. Amen. 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 Come on. Oh, Woo strong. Wow. So powerful. Strong message, really, Jan. I think this is, uh, I, I, I had to write down a couple of things because I, I, I think it's so important. I love the noise cancelling button. Yeah. Really, I love that. I think we all should install one in our uh, somewhere or make a, somewhere a reminder or, or uh, on our hand or whatever. I love it. And also uh, to, to see it with the horses in the, when they are going with the blinders. I love that. This is really a picture I'm, yeah. I'm keeping. And I think this is so important now for the athletes right now also to to switch off you know social media uh to switch off things that can disturb me and to be very very uh, aware and asking the lord with whom shall i spend time even in the team who are those you know where i you know i there is you know coming faith and faith together and strength together uh because the atmosphere is changing when we have the right people around us and uh, i loved i love that really so much and, and the right thinking, thinking then, what would be if I win? You know, what would yeah. be if I win? So this is what you want to think about. This is what you want to, to meditate on. You want to meditate on the good outcome and nothing else. So I, I love that too. And eyes on the prize. This is also something to remember yes. easily. <laughs> Keep the eyes on the prize. And finally, you know, Jesus already said it is accomplished. It is finished. And so that you don't have to fight for victory, but you can actually fight from a place of victory because you, you, you know, you know, you are hundred percent accepted and loved and the others have to fight for that. But you come, come from the position where the victory is already yours. So I loved it so much. And maybe to ask my bold wife, uh, she, she was at the Olympics in, in Sydney. I know it was not always like that. And maybe let me ask you, uh, what would you do differently maybe today, uh, 20 years later? Um, when I was in Sydney um, in the final, I was really full of joy and I had some adrenaline, adrenaline, of course, but I could really, yeah, enjoy this moment and give my best and go for plan A and not for plan B, what happened if, so only look up to God, what he has for me. And I was really, before I was on my knees, I was praying and I trusted him. I was really, how Jan was saying, be still, let me fight this battle because I, I knew the Chinese and uh, other divers, they are really better than I am, but God is living inside of me and it's his strength and he brought me here and I am doing this for him and this gave me such a power and strength. So I really, I would do the same again, really to give it up in God's hand and be free, full of joy and go for plan A and not for plan B. Come on. Yeah. Love it. Plan A. A is the only thing we go for. And if uh, plan A is not there, then it's plan A again there. So you, you, go, you go just for, for A plan in, in your life and uh, no, no other distraction on the left and the right. Love it very much. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything else you would like to add or maybe ask Jan? Yeah, oh, you were so, so good. Really, every word, you can just repeat it slower and slower again because it's so powerful it's so inspiring so nothing is impossible focus on the voice of god um, um this mute button the other voice is to really put it on mute and really plan a and not the lies that are coming and are trying to hinder you to give your best um, you are there now you you have trained so much so now you take the land that is yours. You step on the springboard tomorrow with boldness. You run mm -hmm. your race. You run in your lane. You don't compare to others. You are special. You are unique. Mm -hmm. God wanted you exactly that way and not being someone else. And yeah, and I heard before we started the, the re recording, I heard the voice, you are qualified. I want the competitors now in the village take this mm -hmm. take this for you you are qualified you are not 
something or a little bit less than someone else or the champion, you are qualified. That's exactly where God wanted you to be for such a time as this. Now is the moment. Now it's your time. It's your time to shine. It's your competition. Really, we cheer you on. We pray for you. We, oh, we love you. We are so proud of you. Yeah you are qualified strong so let me ask uh, jan i know jan is uh, also like the pastor for athletes from uh, bayern munich um, especially david alaba for me, myself as in austria uh, is a, is a great soccer hero who just uh, um, moved then to to madrid but um, let me know uh, what what could we learn also there you know what what is what are some things that you are telling your soccer players mm, for so good um i think like having a, a rhythm and having a a repent like a thing a rhythm that keeps you reminded um of those things because i think like the powerful thing in this journey with god is not just like those one-off moments you know it's not just like um being somewhere in a service or being somewhere in a in a in a session It has to be something that you keep reminding yourself of. So I'm a huge um, fan of putting in a, a daily routine, you know, like uh, maybe it's just one scripture that you keep reading or one verse that you're trying to learn by heart right now. But I know that uh, the mind is a battlefield and, um, and that so often like thoughts can come from different sides. And, and I really think like confidence is a huge thing, like, Confidence in God and confidence in my identity in God, like it will determine your performance in a huge way. So to to keep that strong, I feel like um, you have to have some rhythm and some daily routines um, that just keep reminding you. So yeah, maybe a little thing that you can do is like just put one of your favorite Bible verses, put it on your phone on the screen, and and try to learn it by heart or. Every morning you look at it and you think about it. And I think like daily routines are really powerful. So this is something that we're talking a lot um, with the players there that I'm, um, that I'm yeah, supporting of like, hey, okay, how does your daily routine look like right now? And which is the verse that you're currently pondering about because it's so powerful. It will transform our thinking. Awesome. And uh, just when you uh, spoke before uh, the meeting, Uh, and you said, you know, you will go even once a month then from Munich to Madrid uh, mm. and to, to support uh, David Alaba even there. I just love because this shows the really hard relationships. And I think every athlete needs these people around them where they can really be fully themselves, where they can fully trust them. And uh, so I'm so thankful uh, that you, you're doing that and uh, really Uh, yeah, and, and you see the fruit, you know, it is really, you know, some have great family around them, and this is all great too, And but some things you cannot uh, discuss, and it's so good that you have someone, and uh, yeah, thank you so, so much for doing that, Jan. Great, yeah. and um, if there's any other question or in the, in, in the room, if someone else, I see now uh, different sports from track and field and springboard diving. I would then at, at the end for sure love if we could pray, uh, if also Jan could pray yeah. over the athletes in the Olympic village and uh, for also for the coaches and, and all of them. And um, yeah, and then also I, before we do that, I would also love to, give the word to Karina, our personal assistant. Uh, she will do uh, just two, three announcements and uh, then we go into, into after uh, Jan into the worship song. So Karina, yeah, please go ahead. I don't know if there are any questions that I was, <laughs> that I was waiting. Um, so our announcements are that we have the next uh, chapel service tomorrow, 8 p.m. Tokyo time. I'm going to send you the Zoom link tomorrow and feel free to send the email, like forward them to other athletes, team colleagues, friends, whoever you meet in the village so we can reach as many people as possible. And of course, if you have testimonies or prayer requests, send them our way because we love to hear from you and we love to cover you in prayer. And tomorrow, I forgot we have Christian Taylor with us again. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the amazing Michael Chadwick, he's a swimmer from the US. So this is going to be amazing. 
Thank you so much, Karina, and thank you for all the work that you are doing in the background. This is amazing because even late in the night, you know, <laughs> still, you know, uh, WhatsApp and what she's all doing and, and creating and cutting. And thank you so much for, for your amazing, amazing job that you're doing through the Olympics. Really amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, then uh, please, Jan, if you could pray for our athletes. Oh, I know yes. some of them in the mm -hmm. chat, uh, in the in the Zoom meeting right now, have a competition tomorrow, yeah. and mm -hmm. we want to release boldness over their lives. And they are, I think, three in one room, so more wow. are listening now. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I would love to pray. All right, Jesus, we thank you so much that you have your hand on our lives. Jesus, I thank you so much for everyone who's listening right now, who's part of this, and I pray, God, that. The spirit of David, the spirit of like this courageous warrior, just that spirit that just like gets imparted into every person who's listening right now, that we really have the eyes on the prize, that we really see who you are, God, and what you can do, that we have the same spirit that David had when he ran uh, towards his challenge, uh, where he knew like he hasn't to do it by his own strength, but in the mighty power that you have, God, you're a miracle working God, and when you're with us, who can be against us, God? I pray that every person right now just receives their courage, receives a new perspective, uh, a new like faith rising up in their heart and in their soul. God, I pray for peace in their mind, God, that they just in front of their challenge, like they have such a peace where they trust you, God. Uh, pray, God, that the right voices are currently so loud and uh, the right voices of encouragement, of your word, of your promises, and that wrong voices of discourage, God, that they have to be silenced, God, in your name that every fear that uh, tries to make people small or hold people back, that it just has to disappear because your love is so big and it, your love overflows our hearts. God, I thank you so much uh, for every coach who's here, like or for every athlete who's here. Um, you have called them for a time just like this. And they're not here by incidents. They're not just here by, by, by just the circumstance. Like they're here because you wanted them to be here. And whatever they fought against in their past, God, you prepared them for a moment like this. And then you have your purpose on this moment. You have your hand on this moment. And it's there, it's your idea, God. And I thank you so much that you put all your weight, God, and all your love and all your help um, on their life, God. Thank you, God, that grace is in front of them, that grace is behind them, and that the foundation where they're walking is grace. And I speak just Ephesians 3, 20 about over their lives, that you can do so much more that we can, than we can think or imagine, God. God, whatever we dream right now, whatever we can imagine, you put your over, over supernatural grace on it, and you can do so much more. And, and I pray for every, every challenge ahead, God, for every battle ahead, God, that it will be so much better than we can think or imagine, God, that the people who are in this room right now will look back and will be amazed of what you did through them. And, and I thank you so much already for every one of them. And I thank you that you love them so much, that you love them, their soul, their heart. You want to have relationship to them, God. And I pray that the next moments, the next hours, they will be so intense with your presence in their room, in their heart, God. And that, it, that they just feel that you're with them, God, in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Jan. And even while you were praying, I had my Bible open and I have to, to share this with you wow. because I, I got a revelation right now. So in Joshua 1, actually, there is the scripture that everybody or many of you who are reading the Bible know. Uh, in verse uh, chapter 1, verse 6, it's written, be strong and courageous. And then in seven, be strong and very courageous. This is what God is saying to, to Joshua. So really emphasizing be strong and very courageous. And then in verse nine, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So actually three times. And then he's reminding him again. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So it, it needs repetition. We see it here, verse after verse. Even if God wants to repeat it to us, that means something. We need to hear it again. And then what I saw actually in, in chapter 10, verse 25, now Joshua speaks to his people. He says, 
do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, be strong and courageous. So actually what God was telling to Joshua, he said it to his people. And I think this is what you have to tell yourself, be strong and courageous. It's not uh, 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 maybe to, uh, yeah, uh, and you could do it, but it's a command, be strong and courageous. And you can speak it to your, your teammates. You can speak it to others in the village, be strong and courageous. So uh, just wanted to add that. And uh, Lord, I thank you that they really can cry out for boldness and, and ask for boldness because you want to embolden them really with a mantle of fire. And I want to release that over all the athletes. Lord, I thank you for a courageous spirit that you are before them, that you are next to them, that you're behind them. Lord, that wherever they go, they bring the light in the village. Lord, I thank you that where they put their foot, it's, it's their new ground that yet they're taking with you lord i thank you that their thinking will be so focused on you lord and that their their eyes will be so clear lord that they just look focused on what you have for them in jesus mighty name lord i thank you that they go from strength to th strength and that the joy of the lord will be their strength lord we release joy over them lord that this will be an easy thing to go that the button the noise cancelling button is pressed right now in jesus name i press the button right now noise cancelling button you're pressed right now and lord i thank you for a really joyful time for them in jesus mighty name amen powerful karina yeah it's so like just fitting because when jan prayed i felt like really the joy of the lord and to release the joy so when you prayed Jörg, it was just the perfect timing because I felt like God is really inviting all the athletes to enjoy this moment. It's like this once in a lifetime moment that you prepared for, for years and God knows every sacrifice, every training, every like being so focused on this one time event. And he really invites you to enjoy this. Like he knows you have to be focused <laughs> and everything, but at the same time, there's just so much freedom and joy for you. And he wants to enjoy this moment with you. Big amen to that. And that's why we go now into worship. So Marion and Gabriel, they have uh, other worship songs uh, prepared. I don't know how, how many. So if you have to leave actually one, perfect. This is with our time. We are then uh, right on time so that, uh, yeah. So maybe we stop, we say goodbye here already. Yeah. Okay, so everybody feels free then uh, mm -hmm. after the worship song to go or whenever they have have to go. Jan, again, thank you so much for a great message yes, of courage so and boldness. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you, Marion and Gabriel or, already. And uh, big, big hug. Yeah, big hug and we are cheering you on. Yes, and we pray for you. And uh, yeah, looking forward to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Travel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave Chosen